One of the biggest challenges my clients face when they come to me for coaching is how to establish boundaries with family, with friends at work. Most of us struggle to actually have boundaries, to even know what boundaries are, or if we know what they are, how to actually express them to others. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about how to have boundaries and how to maintain them, then stick around. Hello, my name is Elfrida Manahan Vaughan of Metamorphix and this video series under the circumstances you're totally freaking normal is for people who've experienced some kind of highly stressful life event or challenge in their life and wonder sometimes if their reactions and the way that they think are actually normal and I always say to them under the circumstances they're totally normal because if you're here and if you're still thriving or you're still surviving then you're doing okay. This video is about boundaries. Now I've delivered trainings on boundaries and I work with clients all the time supporting them in developing boundaries. And we often struggle to identify what boundaries are and if we if we know what they are even how to have them people often wonder what the the different types of boundaries are and in fact there are six different types of boundaries that we can have so we can have physical boundaries which is to do with our our space and our belongings and the things around us we can have boundaries in relation to our time we can have boundaries that are sexual in relation to our our body in relation to sexual relationships we can have boundaries that are financial we can have boundaries that are emotional into into our emotions and how we feel and boundaries that are intellectual or that are to do with our thoughts and our thinking and so when we um, become aware of these boundaries we have to consider well what matters to us and so boundaries are very very closely linked to our values and so when we become aware of our values then we recognize that it is important for us to have certain things or to live in a particular way and those are the things that then create boundaries for us or at least they should sometimes we don't actually maintain the boundaries and so, for example, if, if one of your values is honesty, then you may find you struggle if you're working in an environment where people are dishonest, because that's breaching a boundary you have around that value. And in those situations, people then often feel that they need to leave the employment that they're in because they find it difficult to maintain the boundary that they have themselves. And that's the key thing about boundaries is boundaries are not for other people. They're for us. So there are lines in the sand or our space or circle around us where we say this is my line and if somebody crosses it then I will do this and that's the key sometimes people are afraid to have a boundary because they think it's about telling other people what they can and they can't do and so that's not really the way to view it the best way to do it is to flip that and to think no it's not about telling people what they can and can't do it's about me recognizing what I am okay with what I am comfortable with and so when we want to establish boundaries then we need to be very clear with other people about what those boundaries are and particularly in relationships and especially romantic relationships if we set them out at the beginning then it helps us to maintain them so we state things like it's not okay if you do this or I'm not comfortable with that or this is this is the way I choose to live and if you want to be part of that then then you you must recognize that or or acknowledge it or respect it as the case may be when it comes to children and boundaries, very often we don't realize, especially parents, that they need to maintain the boundaries by making them very clear to their children. And if the boundary moves, then your child will feel uncertain, unsure, and feel insecure. Because as children, one of the most important things is that we feel safe. And we feel safe because things are predictable. This comes from attachment theory, which you've heard me mention in other videos and I've delivered training on, that we need to recognize that our attachment, it becomes secure because of consistency and because somebody shows up the same way all of the time. And so if, as a parent, you have boundaries and then you move them, then that creates inconsistency and it creates uncertainty. And so that's the same for all of us. So if we say that this is the particular rule in our home, that rule can't change, except under exceptional circumstances and one of the key pieces of advice they give for parents is that if you're going to change a boundary you should change the boundary because your child has earned that change so not because they've grown up like it's not you'll get a mobile phone when you're 10 or 11 or 12 it's you'll get a mobile phone when you're mature enough to have a mobile phone 
And those kind of boundary changes are very, very healthy for children because it puts them in a place of control. And so when it comes to us, we have to think, well, what are the things that I feel comfortable with? And if I'm not comfortable with them, how do I express that to other people? And one of the key things is to be open and honest at the outset. It's very difficult to maintain a boundary after the fact. So it's very difficult when somebody does something that you then turn around and say, oh no, no, you can't do that. When you never stated at the beginning that that was one of the rules, one of your boundaries. And so the clearer we are about what's okay for us and not okay, and when somebody does it, being very clear of the consequences. If you do this, this is how I'll respond, or this is what will happen. Be very quickly, you can become aware of who will respect your boundaries when you start to do that. And people who don't respect your boundaries are usually somebody who is gaining something by you not having them. And that's why often we find it difficult when we start to create boundaries that people struggle with that because they were benefiting from the fact that you didn't have them before. They were maybe benefiting from the fact that you were agreeable, that you always said yes the things that you didn't say no and so if you want to feel better in yourself the first thing is figure out what your values are what matters what things really go against your values or really impact you in a negative way and then decide what's your rule around that what is it that is okay where is the line in the sand for you and then express that clearly to the people around you and if you learn to communicate effectively and communicate in a way that is empathetic is respectful and is open and honest then people inevitably will respect that unless they're gaining from you not having a boundary one of the things I work with my clients when we work on boundaries is helping them to learn how to communicate those boundaries, helping them to recognize them and understand their values so that they, they can express them. And this is really important for people who've experienced some kind of trauma or had some kind of highly stressful life event, because very often we can experience a lack of boundaries. I know certainly for me growing up a home with domestic violence and, and alcoholism and, and experiencing narcissism from, a, from quite an early age in my lifetime, I struggled to recognize my own boundaries because I always felt that I was responsible for other people. I felt that their happiness was my responsibility, which it isn't. But that meant that my boundaries were unclear that people could push and take advantage. And so I, as an adult, I had many people taking advantage of me because I didn't recognize it. Things are quite different now, and I do work on my boundaries all the time. And it's important that we recognize the different types that you may have a boundary around certain aspects of your physical home and your body that you know is different to your financial or different to time. But we do need to recognize the boundaries because people will inadvertently take advantage of them when they don't know that they're there. So if you want to find out more about how to communicate your boundaries more effectively, then please get in touch. I'm more than happy to do a free 30 minute session with you to figure out if I can help you as a coach. If not, you want to just watch some more of my videos, please subscribe because I, I would love to uh, hear your comments and to see you watch the, the videos. And if you want to get in touch with me about anything else, you can contact me via my website below. And remember, if you're here and you're doing okay, if you're managing and you're still maintaining your relationships and figuring things out in your life, then under the circumstances, you're totally freaking normal.